are all attending. Is there anyone more? Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, uh, today's lecture is about image analysis and it is uh, basically based on trace kinetic modeling using PET images. Uh, for starting, let me introduce myself. Uh, my, I'm Song Wasa, a uh, PhD from Gachan University, and also I work, work, work working in the uh, Gachan University. Neuroscience Research Institute, and before moving to the Gachon, I work, uh, I studied it here in this uh, subnational university, hospital. And I, I usually study uh, studied about the trace modeling, uh, developing the method of modeling. So, so Professor Jason Lee, uh, I invited me to for this uh, lecture. Uh, so at first, I want to uh, talk about the uh, quantitativeness of the PET images. So you are all the NM physicians who so are familiar with uh, PET images. Uh, as I understand, uh, the professor Jason Lee already provided uh, about the lecture of the principle of a pad and spectra other machinery. So, uh, so let's see, briefly uh, introduce, uh, look into the principle of a pad. So we first uh, inject a major trace into our body and after staying some, some amount of time, we we do the PET scanning for maybe one uh, 10 or 20 minutes. And then uh, after getting the, after the sensing the red, uh gamma rays through the PET detectors, we can uh, may estimate the source, location of the source of the radiations and using some kind of a mathematical uh, algorithm for the constructing the images. We can have uh, the tomographic image of the larger tracer. So, and then if we usually, uh, uh, basically this, uh, the unit of this uh, measurement is the count per second and if we can apply some kind of calibrations using the, the source of the known activities, we can make these images uh, in the unit of the vector of milliliter or some kind of uh, quantitative measures. So in that sense, we can say uh, the PET or nuclear medicine images is uh, quantitative. We can count of the radiation or we can measure the amount of the radio tracer concentrations. But uh, in clinics or uh, uh, researches, we use uh, three different types of uh, assessment or interpretation of a PET image. The first one is visual interpre interpretation. We just focused on the hot end called reasons, not the amount of the image values. Uh, in some cases, they can just, just uh, using the visually high end uh, low is enough for the, some, some uh, kind of job. But some kind of job is not enough. So we, we need to use it how the hot region, it has uh, how much uh, activities and low region also has how much activity in, in them regions. So the simplest me uh, method is a semi-quantitative measure. Usually the representative one is a SUV, uh, standardized optic values. And in clinic, it, this, this measure is the most widely used one. And, uh, but 
then measure is uh, some limitations I will explain later. And the, the, and the last one is we, uh, we think uh, it has a gold standard for the absolute quantitative analysis. And this is a trace kinetic modeling method. So when this is uh, uh, the reconstructory images where we can simply think of as uh, this image as a SUV, a SUV, if we normalize it with the uh, injected amount and the patient weight. So the distribution is same anyway, but if you do some uh, trace clinical modeling, the results may be quite different. This is because of the, uh, the underlying principles uh, related to the time varying nature of the uh, the PET data or trace kinetic data. Why we explain why this happens? So, what is problem in this uh, type of work? low reconstructed image or SUV images. Uh, so this is a reconstructed images after uh, maybe 60 minute waiting and then do the 20 minute, 20 or 30 minute scanning for the dopamine transport imaging. This is CIT for the dopamine transport imaging. So can you say anything about these images? <laughs> there is a high uptake in the studio attempts, but uh, this is the image of radio tracer distributions. It means that the image values is a concentration or amount of radio tracers. But usually this is not our goal or our our main interest for especially this type of radio ligand receptor binding studies. Uh, if this image is the water, it, it can be used directly, but in this kind of receptor ligand binding studies, the image cannot be directly to the clinical uh, diagnosis or the clinical studies. Because of uh, our main interest, my main interest is in on the the amount of the receptor distribution, not the radio trace distributions. It is different. But, so just taking image is not enough for the that kind of studies. So let's think about the fate of the tracer after in injection into our body. The first is the tracers will be uh, moved through the, the uh, blood vessels and then through circulations. And then, then it will somehow to the extracted to the uh, tissue regions. And if it, the tracers are designed to to target it to the to some receptors, it can uh, go through some kind of biochemical reactions. So there is a lot of uh, processors to affect uh, this uh, fate of uh, radio tracers. So, and they, these processes also are time varying. So the radio tracer image. It is not static. It, it has a time bearing characteristics. And also the, the most important thing is that the, the fate, uh, final core of the tracers. For the uh, brain study, there is a lot of different uh, targets, uh, some kind, some, some is uh, the, the GABA receptors or dopamine or Serotonin or sometimes the enzyme. And now, nowadays, with the uh, amyloid beta or tau, the withdrawal protein is a target. And depending on this target, the trait, date of trace also different. 
from each other. So after injection, if we start to scan directly after injection and then getting uh, some kind of a very small, small frame time images, we can get this kind of different uh, images. So the first, this is the first, uh, first uh, maybe, maybe I think is uh, uh, this is the fifth, uh, fifth, uh, maybe five minute time time frame images. This is maybe twenty fifth. Uh, maybe this one is a ten or twenty minute scan duration images, and this one is uh, also ten minute at post induction thirty minutes, and at fifteen minutes at post induction at seventy to forty five minutes at uh, post induction. The distribution of a radio tracer is very different. So then what what time point can we use for the purpose? Can you choose the the most uh, optimal time frame between this? <clears throat> 60 15 minutes. Why? <laughs> Why? The background ratio is very much up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that answer is partly right and partly wrong because of the, uh, because this uh, image is not the uh, uh, distribution of the receptor, but the distribution of the radio tracers. In in, in this uh, image value, there, there are different kind of uh, radio tracers are mixed. There may be uh, some reason that the cell, the cell concentration is involved and some fairly uh, moving radio tracers that can be involved. And some, some are uh, binded to the, our target receptors and another, others are, can be uh, binded to the unwanted other proteins or chemicals. So there is a uh, different thing they are very mixing. So we don't know how much uh, receptor binded tracers in, in, in these in this images. But it's just looking good, but it's, we don't know how much uh, binded one, how much non-binded one. Yeah. So we needed to the separate this different state of radio tracer somehow. So it so then it requires uh, some kind of mathematical method, and uh, the the method I will explain further. So in, in that point, we need to guarantee the source of the 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 source of the. Uh, the source is making the fate of the tracers. The wanted one is the uh, receptor related process. And unwanted one is the, maybe just a delivery or, uh, or other processes to binding to other sites or unwanted region. So, so let me introduce this, the trace kinetic modeling. So, the, the most basic uh, concept is uh, we, we can use the time nature of the, this data. If we get the scan from the injection point to the maybe 15 or 60 minutes, then this long, long, long scan window data, we can follow the, the we can follow the trace of the radio tracers. Can you follow me? Yeah. If you, you can, we can measure the, at certain point. Maybe it may be book sales or maybe region of interest. And we can extract the radio, uh, radio activity or trace concentration. And then 
at age 40, we can make this kind of thing, uh, varying curves of the Regis concentrations. Then, then we can uh, watch it how these tracers can move to or extracted in specific regions. So in, in, in this region, the, the trace concentration is slightly increase and uh, do some go through some plateau and uh, if, if we get the, uh, the later scanning time it may be uh, clear like this base and this is a uh, level of regions and level of is uh, showing more fast clearance so uh, this is, curve time is dependent on the tissues, and it means that uh, the tissue is uh, how consists of the, this, there is a main, maybe many receptors or there is a lab of receptors. And this is a uh, representative region of uh, rich uh, receptor regions, and cerebellum is a uh, lab of uh, low receptor regions. So if you, in, in, in high receptor region, the threshold will be, uh, in such points, it, it will be trapped, some kind of trap. Finally, it will uh, clear, but in such maybe 40 to 80 minutes, in that point, it will be, looks like uh, trapped in, because of their binded to the receptors. And there may be dissociated somehow. But, but uh, in cerebellums, uh, there is no receptors. They, they are just to uh, deliver to the uh, blue, blue line and extract to the tissue. And then without any uh, chemical reaction, it is directly cleared to the uh, uh, vessels. So, so depending on the tissue types or the targeted trace, uh, trace characteristics and each region shows a different kind of uh, this, uh, this curves. Yeah. So the main idea is if we, if we can uh, follow the, the dynamics of the curves, we can uh, uh, separate the different state uh, tracers where we can uh, estimate or imagine what if the, when the, uh, uh, the, the uh, I will explain uh, later this part. And so trace canopy modeling uh, basically mathematical modeling making the pet data, uh, this kind of uh, uh, activity covers to the uh, specific uh, small number of the parameters. These parameters uh, characterizes the, this beta of the tracers. And it, it is basically mathematical models. And when we imagine uh, the fate of uh, tracers, some are in, in, in certain time points, some tracers in the blood lines, some tracers are uh, in tissue region, and some tracers are track, uh, binded to uh, targeted uh, protein or receptor, some are uh, binded or mounted regions. They are all mixed. So, then we can imagine there will be some kind of exchange process between mm -hmm. tissue and blood and uh, receptor and pre 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 freely stated uh, registration and non speech binding and uh, between non speech binding and pre regulated tracers. So we uh, construct some kind of conceptual models. Uh, 
this model is a compact multi model, and compact multi means uh, the, the group of uh, tracers having the same status. The status means maybe uh, some are, the tracers can be in the same physical region, physical uh, regions. And maybe also the tracers may be in the same uh, biochemical state. So we uh, grouped each, uh, we grouped the tracers uh, in several different kind of compartments. The first uh, compartment is uh, blood, blood regions and the second one, maybe it can be the, the group of tracers are binded to the targeted receptors, binded to the target. So we, we call the CS. And some are, there are some tracers are freely moving or diffused inside of a tissue region. So we call this PF. And then other things we may, or all, all other things we may group to as uh, non specific boundary tracers. Then we may imagine exchange between blood and free concentration of radio tracers, and then free between free and uh, specific binding, and free and non specific binding. And then we imagine there is some kind of uh, some kind of uh, process and uh, some kind of process uh, determining the the speed of the exchange of the between these compartments. The K one is the speed of uh, this blood concentration is. Uh, moved to free region. And K3 is uh, this way, speed of this, this exchange. And K4 is uh, dissociation. Uh, K2 is clearance from tissue region. And then uh, gathering this relationship, we can make uh, some kind of mathematical models. And this, uh, the next step is uh, finding these K parameters using the uh, measured PET image data and uh, also measured the uh, blood concentrations. For this uh, uh, process, we need to uh, scanning PET data and then also we need to measuring uh, blood uh, plasma concentration in, in, in our blood. So we need to do some kind of blood sampling process. Then if you get the tissue concentration and if you get the plasma concentration, you can relate it to, relate to these two type of data somehow. We believe there is some mathematical relationships between CT and CT. And the, the relationship is determined by the, this K parameter. This, they are called the rate constant. So our final goal is to estimate somehow this uh, K parameter from measured tissue concentration and plasma concentration. And here is the important thing. So we can only measure the tissue concentrations, not the CF or CS or CNS. It, they are just conceptual so, and determined by these K parameters. But if we uh, time bearing data of the plasma concentrations, and then if we know K1, K2, K3, K4, these parameters, we can think of the, we can 
we think we can make uh, uh, using this input data and parameters we make generate each concentration or uh, each compartment to concentration so using the West Maker model. This is a mathematical model. We can uh, mathematical equations using these relationships. And then uh, this equation solution is uh, looks like this one, this way. And how can we uh, find these parameters? First thing is we, we do the dynamic studies and then getting the time activity curves from each region of interest to our voxels and measuring somehow the box, uh, blood concentration. It also looks like a dynamic curves in blood. You may think this is tissue concentration and this is blood concentration. And we believe that this, this is input. If we, this type of uh, concentration injected into our body, then the body making this kind of curves in our specific regions and we, we can scan in using the pad. Then the method, method is like this. Sorry. If this kind of input is uh, input into the, this system, and then CP is the changes, and CF is somehow K, based on K1, K2, and K4, CF is also changes somehow like this, and CS also changes maybe like this, and CNS also will have their own curves. And knowing this different kind of compartment to curve, we make we believe we can make this kind of tissue compact, tissue curves. So at first we guessed uh, K1 is K2, K3, K4, K5, K6, we guess any, any value can be tried, not just zero. So if we get, if we have a, a plasma concentration curves, and then we, if we guess the, these values, then we can generate mathematically some curve that looks like maybe, maybe some kind of this curve. Then we compare the measured one and generated one. So if the measured one and generated one is very different, we can adjust the, the, these parameters somehow. Then the second, after adjusting, some amount of the, the uh, parameter values, we can regenerate the another curve and also compare again and measure, uh, assess that the dif difference is high or small. So we repeat these uh, steps uh, again, 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 and some craters uh, uh, satisfies until craters satisfied. It means that the generated one and measured one is very looks different, uh, similar. We, we can stop this repetition. But fortunately, we, can, we have a, some mathematical method to do this kind of repetition. Not uh, in this time, conceptual process in one step, not uh, just a, uh, very many times of repetitions. So we, uh, actually this is not, not very important conceptually. Anyway, we can uh, find the optimal the K parameter by comparing the measured one and the generated one. So this is a uh, overview of the trace kinetic modeling. First we measure, uh, blood sampling during PET scanning, then we can make a blood time activity curve look like this. And then from PET images, dynamic PET images, we can make a, a 
mechanics direct tenics covered in each region. This is regional average tenics covered. If we get the uh, voxel TACs, they will look very noisy because of uh, the pet data is uh, uh, nothing but uh, the country statistics. So small regions have a small, small count and it means that there are very large amount of noise. But if we gathering uh, voxels to make uh, big regions, then they are averages and they will have a very low level of light, uh, noises. So the uh, curves in region, regional curves are looks like very smooth. Looks like uh, small regions, small regions may be showing some noises in TH curve. Anyway, we get the plasma input THC and tissue THC and comparing using CP and CT and using CP, we generated some kind of a, a pseudo TH curves and it, we compared the measured one and by adjusting this parameters, we can finally find uh, the, the most looks like uh, the most similar uh, generated TACs. And it means uh, there are uh, K, parameter, K parameters that make it the most similar TACs. And that, uh, those parameters are the, our final result. And uh, then if we uh, apply this process to voxel by voxel, then we get, for every voxel, we get uh, six parameters. And for example, we, we get the K1 parameter and for every voxel and gathering, we, make, we can make an image of the K1 parameter. So final parameter may be K1 parameter or K2 image or K3 images. So from usually dynamic images have a 30 to 50 frames. So it means we have 30 to 50 images, different images. But we can, we, we do the stress uh, kinetic modeling, then we somehow refine and getting maybe six parameter images, where usually we have one or two images in practical uh, situations. Because of a uh, uh, pet data has a very large amount of noise, so it is not easy to getting the, the six parameter pet using six minute data to work. So yeah. Do we, can you please explain how do we define this given K2, K3, K3? Ah, yeah, yeah. CP is measured, so we, we have uh, uh, plasma concentration. Yeah. Then, first, thing, we use initial, using initial gas, any, any uh, arbitrary. Uh, values using using arbitrary values, we can make uh, this uh, equation. So we can calculate it uh, using this uh, CP and uh, this model, just a mathematical equation uh, using the arbitrary values. Then we can, we, if we calculated this part, we can have a, a pseudo TACs, not real, but and we, we can some kind of curves. Mm -hmm. We I, I called it a generated curve mm -hmm. and compare the generated curve and the measured tissue concentration. So if we, the shape is very different, we need to adjust the, this uh, initial guess. The generated curve is a pre-hand knowledge and uh, the, uh, the, the another curve is being derived after the plasma concentration. Yeah, yeah. Right? This is how. Ah, uh, yeah. Let me <laughs> use the maybe usually 
plasma comes up like looks like this one. And then just think of the multiplication with the model uh, H. It is a uh, consist of K1, two, six. My initial guess 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, all of them 0 0.1. And uh, this make another curve, some kind of maybe, I, I don't know what, what kind of shape, but maybe it looks like, let's see, mm -hmm. assume. And our measured curve looks like, because we have a frame images, so we, we, we only have a discrete pointed. So first guess this, and first, from first guess, we generated this curve. So this curve, two curves is very much different. So we need to adjust these values. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, more 0 0.2, that's one. Then using these values, we can make a second one. Maybe it will looks like. So still there is very big difference. So we again adjust. This is uh, repeated. And finally, if we can get these curves, then we say uh, the parameter, I don't know, to work at to help. This set is uh, making this cup, then we, we say that this is easier. So, gathering this uh, parameters at each voxel, we can make a K1 image. For K2, we can K2 image. We can have K2 image. So, theoretically, if we use uh, the six parameter model, we can get the six parameter images. But usually, that have very high noise. We can we, we cannot cannot apply this kind of very big complex image having many parameters. So in practically, we only use one or two, or sometimes three parameters. I will show you. Uh, So this is an overview of the, the processing required for the stress cat modeling. And this is a example uh, from the actual uh, associated data or ABP6, 16, uh, These parameters are binding potential, uh, indicating uh, receptor Density and it's a kind of a, it's a mixture of the receptor density and affinity. So anyway, so uh, okay. So this type of uh, trace modeling is very important for for the brain studies. There are a lot of uh, uh, different kind of uh, targets. These are the popular targets uh, during uh, past uh, maybe 30 years. And yeah, so there's uh, a lot of different kind of uh, tracer. But there, there is some are usefully uh, used uh, nowadays for summer is not used anymore because they they have some some limitations for the clinical applications. But to 
to know whether they are applicable or not, we need to the kinetics of the tracers. So why we need to this kind of trace kinetic modeling is uh, required for the, this type of brain study. So uh, this is uh, maybe current or maybe future applications of a brain pet, especially trace kinetic modeling. Why is it they are important? They are important for this kind of, uh, maybe imaging studies for the Christian medicine, medicine or drug development. Uh, the getting modelers like me emphasizes that this, this uh, uh, research field, uh, this field is uh, very, uh, trace kinetics are very important for this field. Uh, so we need, in this field, we need to assess the, the absolute quantitativeness of the PET images individually, not average groups of uh, people. So we need to absolute receptor amount to in individuals to make some kind of a therapy plans, Fit, uh, individually fitted plans or, or the related uh, therapy, therapeutic uh, drugs. We need to making, getting um, absolute quantity of the receptors and then drugs. So in this field, uh, People say uh, stress kinetic modeling now is more important. So I think uh, yeah. uh, next uh, I will briefly, very briefly introduce the, the specific uh, kinetic models. Yeah, uh, the gold standard is the plasma model, and I uh, explain the. On more slides. Actually, standard uh, processing uh, pipeline is it looks like for kinetic modeling. Uh, kinetic modeling is not uh, based on very different uh, kind of uh, image processing step and then also group data processing. We need to localize the, the, some kind of uh, target region, voxel or region of interest from the low resolution uh, PET images or spectrum images. There, is, there are a lot of different uh, image processing pipelines. Anyway, we need to, to get the specific uh, regional or voxel level TSH, we need to some kind of this kind of uh, processing pipeline. And then we also need to do data processing, blood sampling and uh, separation of blood and plasma and metabolic collection. And, we need to like. and after do, doing after, after doing this uh, process, then we can do this kinetic model. So these are very complex. It's not easy to apply the clinical diagnosis or clinical settings. So for the blood info function, we need blood sampling. And sometimes if we can get in the scan of the heart or blood lesion, big blood lesion, we can uh, replace this blood sampling with uh, image drives uh, TACs. But is that it also is for the brain studies. And also, as I explained, we, we need to separate, extract just a plasma concentration from blood data and to check the there is there is just, if there is a metabolism. And if there is some metabolism, we need to correct corrections only getting the plasma concentration because the plasma concentration 
will follow the, our conceptual uh, trace of behavior, uh, the process of the trace kinetics. This is a few examples. So we need uh, some samples for getting whole blue sample and some samples for the extracting plasma sample and and also samples for metabolic analysis. So there is a, a lot of different samples need to be extracted. So it, Getting data is very hard, and also analysis is also hard. So we need to also cross also cross calibration for the this uh, blood sampling data and pet data. They are they have a different kind of unit, so we need to make a, using the same uh, concentration units, and we need kind of calibration between this uh, blood data and pet data. So nowadays we have many studies, uh, research studies involve the MRI, not only PET and also MRI data. And if we get MRI, we can use uh, this MRI to get the uh, uh, region of interest or voxel level of this. And this kind of a very complex processing and we can get the regional data more easily. But if we, if, if we don't have uh, MRIs, we need to somehow access the specific brain region manually or using some uh, fairly uh, defined uh, template images. Anyway. Um, and this is uh, now the uh, exemplary compartment model. Okay. The, the most uh, simplest model is uh, single tissue compartment model. Yeah. And you see from this uh, name, in tissue regions, we can, we can we define only just one state, just uh, inside tissue. There is no space binding, no space binding free. Uh, this, this kind of model is uh, applicable for the water data from plasma to tissue and clearance. The water is not involved in any other process. So they're very simple and model is also simple. And computation is also very simple and the result is the most uh, robust. It means it is very robust to the noise levels in the inside of uh, data. And the uh, most uh, popular one is a two tissue compartment model and a reversible uh, kinetics. Two tissue compartment model for reversible kinetics. It means uh, it involves uh, some kind of reversible process, kind of a uh, receptor ligand association dissociation. So there is no no specific and free because of, uh, we we assume that free between free and uh, non specific binding there is there is very fast uh, equilibrium so it looks like uh, just uh, one compartment even if conceptually we can separate but using pet data we cannot see the conceptually see the separation. So only there is the two compartments inside tissue. And in this model, we only have uh, four parameters. But uh, PET data has uh, have a very limited time resolution also. If you, if you, we want to very high resolu time resolution, it means the time frame is very small. And it means uh, there is a very small amount of tracer. It means uh, high noise levels. So to get uh, enough uh, statistics, we need to make the frame very big. It means the time resolution is very low. And using this limited time resolution, 
we cannot follow the uh, let's say the fluctuations based uh, from this uh, kind of uh, four parameters. We cannot distinguish the fluctuation from noise and fluctuation from four parameters. Four parameters uh, curves very sharply fluctuate. So we cannot uh, distinguish. So we only uh, apply the uh, three or two parameter models to the pet data. Okay. So I think uh, if we, if I have a if short time, I will explain to other concepts. Uh, I think it, these are way too difficult to follow. So I will just uh, introduce the different type of models and I'll finish. Uh, another different type of uh, uh, tissue compartment model is about irreversible kinetics. It means there is no reversible process. Uh, this is a representative model for the FDG because there is uh, in the window of the dynamic study in clinic for the FTG, it may be maximally it can be can be ninety minutes. If we if we can uh, we, maybe we can longer window a uh, longer duration scan, but the F eighteen has a uh, very not big uh, half times, so over the 120 or over the 20 hour, two hours or three hours, you don't have a good data at that point. So in during very short, short uh, maybe 90 minutes, 60 minutes, short durations, the uh, FDD's uh, behavior, it looks like a universal. There is only trap by phosphorations. Actually, they are somehow clear to the our outside of our body. So actually, finally, it will clear, but we, it may be uh, maybe four or five hours after injection. So we can follow the that clearance using PET imaging. So in PET imaging durations, we this FDG looks like a uh, kinetic cell looks like uh, irreversible. So we using this kind of uh, irreversible models. They have uh, only three parameters, no kind of uh, diverse process from this, this compartment to this compartment. And we focus only this case parameter. How many tracers are uptake and they are metabolic among 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 the among the uh ex, ex, tracers extracted from blood how many tracers are trapped and how many tracers are uh, cleared without metabolism so, this rate is defined by net flux rate. It means K1. This is ratio determines uh, the actual input tracer amount. And then K3, K2 plus K3 means all input to tracers. And K3 indicates only the uh, Metabolite to the tracer. The ratio means uh, the net influx rate. So we in FTG or the, this kind of uh, universal model, we only focus on this kind of parameters. And so 
I skip this panel also. And uh, the method I explained uh, before, these are we, we say the nonlinear parameter curve fittings. And this method is a gold standard, but is a computationally hard. Uh, they require a large amount of computations and they are very sensitive to noise levels. So it is not easy to apply to pixel level data. So to make uh, parametric images, K1 images or K2 images, the nonlinear parameter method is not easy. It means uh, this kind of uh, tissue compact multi model is not directly applicable to the parametric imaging applications. So in the case uh, there is a, some kind of indirect, indirect method, uh, one is a linearization of the compact multi model, and another uh, simplification is uh, reference region models to avoid the blood sampling. So the goal is to make uh, the kinetic modeling steps more easier. And finally, they are applicable to the clinical settings, but not nowadays, I hope. Uh, anyway, uh, Reparentation models, the idea is uh, like this. There is a one compartment model for tissue region, and then there is another compartment model for the we call the reference region model. Reference region means there is no target. In receptor studies, there is there is no receptor regions, so we get uh, tissue concentration and reference region concentration. We can have two type of different to time active curves. And then the idea is using this reference tissue curve as plasma curves. Because uh, this tissue curve, uh, tissue reference to THC uh, can provide some information of uh, blood data. So without having blood data, somehow we can use this uh, reference THC as a uh, surrogate for this uh, CP. So we can make a new model consists of this three compartment model. But it is not conceptually, but we can make uh, some uh, mathematical process and we can uh, estimate the, the parameters using only the reference tissue compartment model data without plasma data. And another uh, simplifying method is uh, uh, you may heard of this uh, graphical analysis. Uh, some model is a Logan plus, some model is a Petrolic or get a Petrolic. So, from the compartment model equations, we can we can transform the these uh, equations to this kind of simple linear regression models. It means uh, we transform this uh, input and uh, hello input and tissue TAC is somehow transformed, then we can make uh, this kind of uh, new curves. X axis is uh, this, uh, this data, Y axis is uh, this data. Then this curve has very characteristic shapes. Firstly, they are curved, but after some time point, they look like a uh, straight line. There is some point to the straight line appears. So 
it, it, it may be different from for each trait uh, cases. For very fast kinetic tracers, discover very fast, fastly looks straight lines. Uh, usually, there is no, if there is no uh, target region, the transformed line looks like uh, all the way the straight lines. And uh, if uh, the TC has uh, some kind, some level of the uh, receptor region or target region, it will look like uh, uh, first it curves and then after some time point, they will build that uh, straight lines. So using these lines, we can say that, oh, this curve, this TAC has no receptor region. This TAC has a, uh, this TAC has a high receptor region. This TAC is for the low receptor region. Anyway, uh, fitting this, this model to this curves, we can uh, estimate some kind of a, uh, other uh, kinetic parameters. It, they are mixture of the K1 or K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, they are defined by uh, mathematically, but I skipped to their meaning. So anyway, yeah. So if you, you, if you, you need to some simpler method for the trace kinetic, and uh, if you want to make a uh, receptor amount over receptor related information using trace kinetic modeling, so you need to, you can apply this kind of graphical analysis rather than the nonlinear regression model. And what happens using this kind of a graphical analysis model? If we apply the nonlinear fitting curve techniques to the each voxel, they, they are very, very noisy. They produce very noisy images, but this kind of a uh, linearized method can produce a more clear image because they are more robust due to the noisy levels. So the Logan that I explained it was uh, for the reversible uh, ligand binding studies. Uh, and for the irreversible models like uh, FDG, we use uh, slightly different uh, models. But, but uh, uh, mathematical steps are very similar. The tissue covers are transformed to, into some different uh, axis, like this, this x axis and y axis. And then the, the transformed curves virtually slightly, slightly curved. And then finally, after some time point, it will look straight lines. And uh, using only straight lines, we can uh, estimate this kind of parameters more robustly. So, yeah. uh, this is uh, what I have prepared. I think uh, <laughs> the last two things, graphical analysis or the, the example of the combat model is not easy to understand, but I think I want to, to emphasize that the concept is uh, we make, uh, we get the uh, input data and tissue pet data and doing some jobs to comparing generated one and measured one and uh, find the best parameter to making the similar, the most similar cases and then uh, so, so the last question is uh, so what what happens if we can get this K1 and K2 
Okay, first I think I said, uh, sorry. First I said, uh, I compared this uh, three different assessment method. Visual is slightly different. And SUV is a static image analysis. And transcript modeling is dynamic studies based on analysis using all type of. It looks at dynamics of just kinetics, but for the SUVs, we do not consider, consider the dynamics. We pick the, just uh, one time point from maybe this, this point. This image provides SUV image or SUV ratio image, but just can't modeling based to dynamic data, all the dynamics of time, time data. So what is different? Without this dynamics, we don't know at this point, we don't know how, how the tissue data are mixed using different state. We don't know how much, how much is the concentration of this part. The, the main interest is on this concentration, but we don't know this concentration because when using when we when we seeing the SUV images, we seeing this, this tissue tissue regions. But our main interest is in the specific regions. So we don't know how much this level. But if we consider time bearing natures, we can somehow separate this this compartment, this compartment, this compartment. And these parameters can relate it to the this specific compartment concentration. So if we know this K3 or K4, we can get some information about actual amount of this CS. But Using only SUV image or static image, we don't know this amount of, yeah. And uh, another, another advantage of the, you may think, Mm. Yeah. This is a process concentration where after we injected the process in injections. But if we can inject it, inject the, the ledger tracers continuously, then blood concentration looks like this and they have flat shoes. And supplies is con continuous and steady. Then the output tissue concentrations also have latches. So in that case, they uh, reach it to the kind of a steady state or equilibrium state. Then at that time, at any any point of the, the equilibrium or steady state. We can use a static image, just one image for the measuring this kind of uh, uh, specific uh, finding data extraction. But because we use bolus injections, the blood data decrease uh, and finally there will be no low supplies and the tissue curves will 
finally decrease because there there are more not anymore the input supplies. So imagine then we injected the blood very fastly, then the blood blood curve will be highly peak and most of the uh, injected larger chasers are supplied to the tissue in very short time windows. That they will be maybe several hours, several minutes. All the tracers are will be located in the tissue regions. But imagine if we uh, injected the bolus very slowly, then what happened? Can you imagine if we injected the stress very slowly? K1, K2 parameters altered. K1, K2 parameters altered? Yeah, no, yeah, no. They are system, K1, K2 is uh, our body. So we assume that they are not uh, changed during the scan uh, durations. So K1, K2 is uh, not changeable. So they are fixed, uh, fixed system, and if we uh, supply it slowly, then blood flow very slowly, looks like. And tissue cover also slowed like this. But maybe time scale is stretches. All cover is maybe similar. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, if we uh, supply the uh, into blood uh, tracers, and maybe the tissue covers, maybe looks like from from this cup. If we uh, supply uh, Bolus injection very slowly. And not sure, but it's like let's imagine uh, then the tissue cups are maybe like this. The peak will shift. The peak will shift. Yeah. They still won't change. Yeah, yeah. So, if we can somehow uh, rescale the time time axis, they will fit it like this. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain, but any the the whole shape is the same if the time scale is uh, changes. So, uh, just kinetic modeling, doing some kind of uh, these jobs. These curves make maybe very shortly. It means uh, the just kinetic modeling make the data time time dependency. We can, we, we have this all the dynamic, we can change its time scale somehow using mathematically. Uh, Even if we individual uh, velocity injection speed is different, it's not matter for this kind of study. But as we study, if you, if you use uh, very fast, Injection for one person and for other person use uh, very slow injection make uh, big issues because uh, some we usually the same time duration from patient one sixty two ninety duration and patient two sixty two ninety Taking me is taking me too. But if their injection speed is different, 
So optimal pointer will be different for each person. This is a big issues. Yes, it will. But the test kinetic modeling uh, considers a kind of a shape, whole shape. So we can make a tiny different uh, the, the So this is uh, what I prefer. Uh, is there any other questions for? Um, uh, about the injection, I mean, but how long is the difference? So it will make the difference with you know. Ah. I mean. If one yeah, yeah, one yeah. nurse inject like three minutes and yeah, yeah, the other yeah. nurse inject four minutes, I don't think there is a problem. Yeah. Uh, for trace kinetic modeling, it's not very big big difference, and in SUV images, several seconds are not mm. not uh, problems, I think. But this this is a, a very extreme case, it I. I said, and but uh, maybe yeah. several minutes. Yeah, it may be uh, affects. Yeah, several minutes. But important thing is uh, the consistent process. Consistent of practitioner is uh, can be fine, but individually the. Injection, if we inj injection is uh, very different from individually, mm -hmm. it will make a big issues. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Usually, this, this subject is not easy to understand. I understand. I know. Yeah. Uh, so I put uh, some reference for this kind of choice uh, uh, kinetic modeling. These are these are references that I use uh, to make this slide, but these are not good to uh, capture the concepts. I think it, uh, these are the more Useful, especially this kind of uh, this review paper is very cool. This in this, in this uh, paper, the nomenclature paper is also good conceptually, and also the Cherry Spear PMM textbook is also good, I think. You can uh, refer to these uh, books or papers for getting concepts from test kinetics. And also, if you have any question about or this subject in uh, future your works, or uh, please, uh, really feel free to contact. Yeah. And ask an opinion from the main What's the question of the You had a book, EGs. EGs? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, there is one software from Japan. They are applying this software on brain space. Easy, uh, jet scrolling. So, what's your opinion? Actually, I don't know the software. Yeah, yeah. So, if you. Uh, some information provide if you can provide me that uh, information I will give you my uh, opinions too. Is it for the kinetic modeling? Uh, uh, they, just they, a spec I, spec I, I apply that on train spec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on set score, they 
this is classified images. Ah, I think. Oh, let me check the yeah, doctor. Yeah. I tried to. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, sort of uh, freely available. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Let me check. Yeah. Similar with neuros. Ah, uh, Yeah, I, I actually I, I didn't have experience on the also. <laughs> I uh, usually I use use uh, I don't use the commercial <laughs> program usually. I made my own code for the, this uh, uh, process and. Uh, for the image processing pipelines, I used uh, for this time kind of job. I used uh, also SPM or Presuffer, the kind of software I use. And for getting modeling, I use my own code. And the most well known software is P mode. It is very, it is very, uh, very, very fit. Very, very, how to say? Very, very dedicated to the pet or nuclear medicine studies. P mode, but it, it, I, I heard it is very expensive. I, I tried to check the you know state and then that's okay. So then let's finish. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Yeah.